Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237 as I continue my marathon of films by Alfred Hitchcock. And now I'm getting to one of his most popular films. One of his few actual horror films, and that is The Birds from 1963. Which again, I've said this in every Hitchcock review. Um, up until this marathon, the only film of his I've seen is Psycho. And Psycho is my third favorite film of all time. So even his more straightforward horror films, I haven't seen. Even this one. But The Birds is a movie I'm still familiar with. I mean, it's been referenced, mentioned so many times in film, TV, everywhere. It's been referenced. It's a very popular film so far probably my favorite from 63 uh i'd have to go back and look because there was also some price films that came out in 63 that i like and actually kind of bloody too because i mean if you think about it yeah um the first Splatter film came out in 1963, because that's when Herschel Gordon Lewis came out with uh, Blood Feast, which is the first Splatter film. But Hitchcock, I mean, at this time, he he was kind of like the Steven Spielberg, you know. He was the top filmmaker, so for him to do a movie this bloody, like a guy with no eyes, like his eyes pecked out with blood all over him. That was pretty, you know, that was almost like a Saw film for like a major studio film back in 63. But uh, I really liked this movie. And, you know, this is also considered Alfred Hitchcock's monster movie, which if you follow my channel, I'm a fan of monster movies. I mean, Bride of Frankenstein, my favorite movie from the 30s. The 30s Universal Monsters is my favorite era of horror. And there's actually a feature on this. I, I left a, a Blu-ray case over there. It's part of the uh, House of Hitchcock box set that I got. It's like a 15-minute feature called uh, The Burge Hitchcock's Monster Movie. It has a nice little history of the monster films from the 20s and 30s, and then where they went in the 50s, and how Hitchcock came to pretty much do uh, The Birds. And it kind of is a monster movie, but done in a way that only Hitchcock can do it, which he didn't take a, you know, a, an imaginative creature or monster. He didn't take something that... It, I, I know I sound like shit. I am really stuffed up again. It's not corona, I promise you. You're not going to get a virus from, from watching this video. <clears throat> but... Um, which Speaking of corona, I, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But, uh... Yeah, or he didn't take, like, a, a nuclear, you know, a, a radiation-ridden creature. He took something from our everyday lives, like birds, and made a monster movie out of it. And, you know, he, he didn't take big, scary birds, you know, like vultures or condors or, like, hawks and falcons. He took fucking seagulls and sparrows and crows. Shit we see every day. And... Like, there are even parts that feel like an early 60s B-movie. For example, the, the most famous scene of the whole film. Which is after the townspeople have a very long scene in this bar about birds and what you know what's been going on and then we get that aerial shot of everyone running around and just the birds sweeping in and uh 
we get the actress uh, Tippi Hedren, who's our female lead, in the uh, phone booth. You know, and the bird, the seagulls crashing into it. Yeah, it looks like a B movie, but there's still just that Alfred Hitchcock sophistication to it. That I don't really know how to describe. I mean, if if anyone else was to make a movie about killer birds, especially where it's seagulls and crows and shit, it would have been a. It probably would have been like an Ed Wood movie, but Hitchcock, being the master filmmaker that he is, and the master of suspense, he was able to make a very interesting movie. And what really makes this work, in my opinion, is sort of what made uh, Night of the Living Dead, the original Night of the Living Dead, George Romero, work five years later, which is no real reason why the birds are attacking. Like, there's no real reason why the dead are coming back to life in Night of the Living Dead. Just don't give them a reason. They don't need one. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it takes place in uh, Bogota Bay. I don't even know if that's a real place. California. And actually, I'll just read the facts off this. Released March 28th, 1963. Uh, Hitchcock was inspired to make the birds after reading a news account of a 1961 incident in Capitola, California, where thousands of sooty shearwaters smashed into houses. I actually read about this uh, while I was watching it. Apparently, a bunch of seagulls ate some toxic algae, and it kind of fucked them up. Rather than the traditional music score, the soundtrack for the birds is comprised instead of electronic sound effects that include simulated bird cries and wing flaps. These sound effects were created by the Mixtrotonium, an electronic musical instrument invented by Oscar Sala. That was one thing I noticed. Um, yeah, he sort of does like what Toby Hooper would go on to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not to that extent. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, at first I thought. like When we get the bird attacks. It's like these simulated. Squawks and chirps. And wing flaps. At first I thought they were just bad. Bird sound effects. Almost like someone doing like a bad. Donald Duck. Impression. That's kind of what it sounds like. But yeah. That's the score. I guess. And even, um, the very end, like the very, very, the last shot of the film, which is my favorite shot of the film, actually, there is sort of like an ominous kind of sound, but throughout the whole film, there's not really a score, and that's something I really liked, because, and I noticed it about halfway through, because there are very long scenes like with our lead played by uh, Tippi Hedren there's like a long scene where she's sitting on a swing and it's very silent or just people sitting together in a room and there's no music uh, I thought that built some tension and I believe this was his first film after Psycho which I know he wanted to go um, without the soundtrack in Psycho. But, of course, you know, Bernard Herman put the score to the shower scene and it opened it up. It would also happen for Halloween. So I don't know if just his desire to go to do a movie without a score carried over to this, and that's just what happened. But... Tippi Hedren was discovered in a diet drink commercial by Hitchcock. And Hitchcock wanted to give the impression of unending terror, so he did not add the end at the end of the film. 
So yeah, that's backstory to the birds. I haven't even got into the plot yet, but basically, uh, Tippy Hedren plays this woman. Um, this tablet started to piss me off. I'll, I will tell you that. Plays a woman named Melody, who's from San Francisco. She's at this pet shop, and she meets this lawyer named Mitch, who's played by Rod Taylor. And they they have a little bit of an exchange, and he somehow gets her to buy this pair of lovebirds for his kid sister for her birthday, and have her deliver it to his house, which is down in this Bogota, Bogota, Bodega, uh, Bod Bodega Bay. So, just kind of getting through the beginning, she delivers the birds, the, the love birds. Uh, you know, she takes a boat across the bay. He sees her. He drives around to meet her. But when she comes back, she gets pecked in the head by a seagull. And yeah, you get the early '60s thick red paint blood. Which, of course, I mean, Herschel Gordon Lewis, Blood Feast, he would use a similar looking blood. I actually like that look. And that's another thing about this movie. It starts off slow, kind of like Night of the Living Dead. It starts off with the lone zombie in the cemetery. And so... You know, she, she meets some of the people around. Like, there's this other woman who's a teacher. Which, who was that actress who played the teacher? Suzanne Plachette? I don't think I know her. But his younger sister, Kathy, when she was like 11 at this time, she's played by Veronica Cartwright. Who would go on to be in Alien. And she was in the 1978 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Which is my favorite version of that film. So that was cool. To see her as a child actress in that. And <clears throat> of course Hitchcock's cameo. Is he's the guy walking dogs out of the pet shop. They were his two his dogs in real life. So they, they set up the girl's birthday party and the kids outside the birthday party, they get attacked by birds. Um, so then people kind of start to notice, well, because then they're all inside the house and then we get this really great scene where just hordes of sparrows come through the chimney and into the house, which... It, it, Tippy Hedger is actually an animal rights activist. But I guess a lot of the sparrows that were used were... A lot of them were bought from a pet store. The seagulls... The seagulls and the crows were actually captured. <laughs> like Seagulls were caught at a dump. And mostly caught by one guy. Maybe he had a crow, but... And just each scenario with these birds keep getting bigger and bigger. And it's pretty isolated to this one area. And, like, you know, eventually there's a scene where, you know, they know something's wrong with the birds. So we see uh, Hedron. She's at the school with all these kids. And this was kind of ballsy. They just, she, her, the teacher... And all the kids decide to run for it. And, yeah, it, it might look kind of green screeny, but what really sells it is I was impressed by the reactions of the children's face. Like their faces and how they're acting. It looks like real terror on their face. And, like, when they're supposed to be getting pecked by the crows, because they're attacked by crows, which a crow slash raven is my favorite bird anyway. Can't imagine why, but... 
Like, when these kids are getting attacked, they look like their reactions really sell it. Like, they look like they're being attacked. So I was impressed by that. I thought that was a very well done scene. Also, Tippy Hedren really reminded me of Janet Lee. Not just because Hitchcock always has, you know, his leading ladies are always blondes. But she has the short hair. She has this very soft voice. Kind of like Janet Lee, At least in Psycho. Um. <clears throat> and then right after that, we get the scene in the bar, which is one of my favorite scenes because... It would kind of go on to be what we would see in, like, a George Romero film or, say, like, Stephen King's The Mist, where you have this common problem, but when people try to work together to solve it or figure out what it is, we as humans are our own downfall. Because, you know, we get this scene in the bar and... Which first, I just want to say, with this whole COVID-19 shit going on, I think this was the right time for me to see this film. Because, just, you know, there's mass hysteria going on out there. No one really knows what the fuck to do or is going on anyway. You know, the state I live in is not doing well. I hope it's going well wherever you are, but, you know, just sort of thinking of the coronavirus as the birds in this film and with how people are trying to solve it, even in just this one scene within the bar, it was pretty good allegory, at least I thought, and... You know, the... Eventually, it goes on how people are, you know, confined to their homes, and it, it deals, it's kind of like a, uh, like a zombie movie. It, it kind of plays out that way, because eventually they have to board up their windows, and they have to rush to get to a car to find a safer area to drive to. Um, of course, Hitch, Hitchcock would go on to say that, you know, birds are attacking for giving, for humans taking nature for granted. I think it's one of those films or reasons that you can just kind of make up your own reason. Movies like this, I just assume not have a reason to... Just because. Just because works enough for me. I do want to say the scene in the bar. Look at where we are right now. Like schools can't have vending machines with junk food. Gluten is evil. In this scene, in a bar, there's a wall of alcohol. There is a vending machine for cigarettes. There are people smoking inside. And there's a woman who says, when they're talking about the birds... Uh, can you keep your voices down? You're scaring the children. And it was fine. Like, they were allowed to be in a place where there's alcohol, vending machines of cigarettes, and smoking. We fucked up somewhere. <laughs> we're a bunch of pussies now. But anyway, that's besides the point. And then, of course, and it even seems like the, the birds are kind of intelligent because... They swoop down because they're all in the bar and they're all talking about, you know, and they all have different theories like, uh, like, fuck them, just kill the birds. There's like a bird expert in there. There's a, people talk about different attacks. People are scared. They notice the birds are fucked up. This one seagull swoops down and hits a guy who's pumping gas, knocks him out or kills him. I don't know. The gas goes everywhere, and it all goes towards this guy trying to light a cigarette. Of course, they're trying to get his attention. 
that makes him blow up. That makes the cart next to him blow up. And that's when you get that great aerial shot. I'm still not sure how he did it because it looks like a model. It looks like an aerial shot. I'm not sure how he did it. I'm not sure what the uh, uh, optical effects were. But that's when we get the aerial shot. We see everyone running around. And the birds start coming in. Uh, Tippy Hedren runs into the, um, the toll booth. Toll booth. Wow. Telephone booth. Excuse me. The payphone. And they start crashing into the sides of it. Which... Before that, when they're still in the bar, you get this, I kind of like how this was shot. It, it's like a chain reaction of all the explosions and like the birds causing it. Tippy, every time the camera shows Tippy Hedron, it's like, it, every time before it changes, it shows like explosion or something happening. I just, Uh, I like how that was done. And then, of course, they <clears throat> they make their way out to their their farmhouse. They they board everything up. They find out the teacher's been killed. Tippy Hedren gets attacked, and they pretty much decide they have to get out of the bay. And that's when you get the wonderful shot at the end where. Hedron is all, she's near catatonic because she's so fucked up. Which, I don't remember who the male character was, but, because there's, there's the guy, Mitch, his mother, his sister, and Hedron. I want to say it was the guy from the pet store, but I don't remember. But it's the guy with no, who's been pecked to death by the birds. And it's not really gory i mean for the time it is i mean he's got like the blood and meat around here but it's just like black hollow holes in, in his eyes and of course he's pecked all over great effects for the time and just the way it looks even with its lack of gore and just those blank hollow holes i i the effect was very well done and I love that shot at the end for the, they get Hedron out to the car. They're going to try to get her to a hospital and just see what else is out there. But there's thousands of birds, like impending doom, just like perched on the fence, on the roof, the the canopy, the trees, the, the fence, the mailbox, just kind of watching them drive down. And that's when you get, like, that ominous, like, whoa, as they drive away. I, I love, that's my favorite shot of the whole film. And, yeah, th this is more of a, <clears throat> um, uh, hor straightforward horror film than, say, his suspense and thriller films. Some of the themes explained is like love and violence because we start off with lovebirds and then, you know, then it goes into seagulls, then crows and just how each gradual attack becomes more and more horrific and violent. There was some controversy behind the film, mostly because this was based somewhat on a book by uh, Daphne de Maurier. Probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, the author was not happy with it because it was like a sleepy England farm town. But it, but it was changed to a, a California spot. So the author was unhappy with that. I guess there was some sexual tension between Hitchcock and Hedron that you can read more into it because this is about the birds, not really about that. But I guess he made advances, she rejected him, and he kind of 
fucked her into contract and just kind of prolonged a lot of stuff for her. Which, Tippi Hedren is the mother of Melanie Griffith and the grandmother of Dakota Johnson, who was the lead in the Suspiria remake, which I also reviewed. <clears throat> but yeah, the birds, it's... And of course, this was probably... Uh, I think this was the biggest inspiration for Spielberg to do Jaws. To take a mundane... Excuse me. A mundane, everyday thing that everybody knows about. Sure, maybe not everyone gets to see a shark. But everyone knows what a bird is. Everyone knows what a shark is. And make a monster movie out of it. And make it effective. Hell, a lot of shots are taken directly from the birds. We get a guy with no eye that scares someone. You know, scene with like carrying someone, laying them down, giving them CPR, you know. Spielberg uh, is an admirer of Hitchcock anyway, but, you know, Jaws. And just a lot of the monster movies that came after this, whether it also be something like Tremors, whether it be even like a zombie film. You know, again, like, Dead and Living Dead, there's no reason why they're coming back to life. They just do. But also just, you know, how there's a problem. It's getting worse. We gotta, you know, we gotta isolate ourselves. We gotta barricade ourselves. That doesn't work. We gotta get out of here. People are sort of their own downfall. I don't know what took me so long to see the birds. I, I just, I never got around to it. Maybe because I thought it looked like a cheesy, cheap B-movie. Which, yeah, if you see clips of it, that's what it looks like. But like anything else, Hitchcock, it has that sophistication to it. That craftsmanship to it. And I really like The Birds. I, I definitely see how this is a classic. But anyway, yeah, I, I gotta go do something. I, I sound terrible. And this has gone on too long. But anyway... That is my review for The Birds, and don't forget, tomorrow I will be doing the answers to the Q&A. So, go back to my thank you, three, you know, the thumbnail where I'm like this. Leave your, any questions, whatever you want, I'll answer them tomorrow. So, thank you for watching.